Okay, so let's dive dive deep into the uh, thematic map uh, because there are so many types of the thematic map, um, and also those are also those type of maps that we spend most time in cartography. Uh, so we have core class map, uh, dot density map, proportional symbol map, and also heat map. So those maps are pretty popular nowadays, um, even for some non-GIS tools like Tableau, MongoDB. They also support those type of maps. And of course, in ArcGIS Pro, so, uh, you can use those predefined templates to create those maps very easy. Uh, we also have the Ethereismic um, map, um, cartogram, and also flow map, and also the other types of maps. So those maps are also very popular. Uh, however, in ArcGIS Pro, you cannot create, the, create those maps directly. So you have to go through some um, calculations Okay, and next you can create those maps. So um, those are by default. You can create those maps, those four types of map directly. Okay, so first, core class map. Uh, so core class map is used to represent enumeration data, and also is also called the area or shaded mapping. Okay, uh, so here we have the enumeration units. Of course, it might be different counties. Um, I guess, yes, counties. And also we have those attribute data. So those are numbers in this case. And we just use different colors, okay, to representing the range of those uh, numbers. So that is a color plus map. Color plus map is, is most frequently used um, thematic map. However, so there are several major concerns concerns when you design those color plus map. So for example, the data classification. Uh, we know that we learned from the previous lectures that there are four types of major data classification methods, natural break, equal intervals, uh, um, and also uh, standard deviations, and also um, a quantile, sorry, those four types of maps. And we know that by choosing different type of data classifications, even for the same data, the map will look like differently, okay? So that is a major consideration. You also need to think about how to design your legend and also how to choose what kind of a symbol do you want. So especially like the colors, OK? Uh, so we will talk more about colors uh, in the next week. The next uh, very commonly used map is called proportional map. Or in ArcGIS, it's also called a grad graduated map. So instead of using colors, we're using different type of symbols and actually we're using the size of the symbols or the area of the symbols to represent the numbers. Uh, it is very rare to use 3D uh, symbol like volume to represent the quantities. Uh, so here, for example, we have the base map and also above those base map, we have those symbols like the, those different size of the circles. So the bigger the circle is, uh, more likely the number the bigger the, the, the data that representing represented will be. Okay. Uh, of course data classification is a major consideration and also you may also, also need to consider the right choose the appropriate colors. And however the most important part in the proportional symbol map is that because we are using two dimension or three dimension symbols to represent the data. So people tend to underestimate uh, two-dimension symbols or three-dimensional uh, symbols. So we have perfect perception for the one-dimensional uh, symbol, for example, the lens. Okay, and so if this representing two kilometers and this representing one kilometers, so we human eye, we human beings will understand the, the the re relationship very easy, so we know that that is two to one. Okay, if we are looking at two dimensions, so for some of the areas, and so for some of, uh, okay, I'm not drawing that one uh, accurate. So for example, the relationship between two two areas is four to one. Okay, suppose that the real relationship is four to one. What people tend to, um understand or tend to uh, perceive is it probably will be 
um, 3 to 1. OK, uh, so we tend to underestimate those values of those two, di two dimension symbols. OK, so that is the big problem, the biggest problem of the two proportional symbol map. And if you're using 3D symbol like volume, so that will be even worse. So for 3D map, so try to avoid using 3D symbols or three, even 3D maps. OK, um, so this is a proportional symbol map. Uh, we also have the dot density map, so that is used to to visualize the variation in the spatial density. Uh, normally, we use one dot to represent many items. For example, one dot equals uh, fifty persons. Okay, uh, so in this case, we see one dot represent nine hundred persons, and in this case, one dot represent three hundred persons. Okay. So some considerations, the first one is that how do you define your unit or your different regions? So of course, choosing different regions or zones uh, will give you a different type of the dot density map. And also, how do you want, how do you want to choose the, the appropriate dot value and also dot size? So dot value rep means that what are the numbers each single dot represent? So in this case, one dot represents 900, and on this case, that one dot represents 300. And we can see that two reps in the same data, because you choose different values, so this map looks like more crowded. OK, it looks like we have more person on this on this map. Actually, they are representing the same data. And also dot size. So dot size is the size of those circles. So for example, this one have the relatively small dot size. And this one has the relative the, the bigger dot size. So even we are using the same dot values, but we are, but because we're using different dot size, so this map will look like more crowded. Okay, um, so that will give people different impression. Okay, so that is uh, something that we need to consider. And also, how do you want to place those dots? Okay, uh, so in most cases, those dots are, are placed randomly, but in some very rare uh, scenarios. So, for example, we have this uh, four regions. Okay, because the dot can be random. So, if we put dot like this, and on, um, it is will give a different impression that if we put dot like this. Okay, so in this case, we are using the same dot size and our same dot value. But because the way that we uh, place a dot are different. Although it's a very extreme example, but I hope that do tell you the problem. That is, if I use a different placement method, so this gives you like, like everything is concentrated at the center. However, every, this one is give you like more um, uh, dispersed uh, distribution of, of the data. OK? So that uh, the adjustment of the place of the dot is also another major consideration. A uh, heat map has become very, very popular nowadays. So heat map is just basically tell you that how your data is di distributed. So in this case, you can see here we have more variables that are more um, spatial entities in Los Angeles than in San Francisco. OK, so that a heat map and it, it can change uh, dynamically when you zoom in, zoom out if, if that is an online map. However, so heat map is just a visual aid, OK? So there's no way that you can make accurate comparison, OK? So it, it's just visually help you, help, help you visually explore your data, but you sh it's very hard to make accurate comparison, OK? So that's the problem of the heat map. Uh, we also have the other types of maps, like arithmetic map. So, um, or sometimes we also call it 3D dimensional map. So that is, we convert those elevations uh, into a 2D map. So here we can get the information of those 3D uh, dimensions. Okay, so that is a arithmetic map. Uh, we also have the cartogram. So cartogram is very uh, popular nowadays, especially that during this uh, election uh, time. So cartogram, you will see that a lot online. So. Cartogram that instead of using the true size 
to representing the A regions while using the size of the geographic regions to representing the values. OK, so for example, here, the map A is representing the true size of those each state. However, so if we are using the area to represent the other features, okay, so like the the number of the like population, uh, for example, California. So for example, that population of California is the largest, and we will see that in this case, uh, the area of the California will be larger than the Texas. There are several types of you can create the cartogram. So, so you can have this continuous cartogram. So where we we still keep all the uh, geographic features connected or we can have this discontinuous cartogram where we keep the shape of each uh, spatial feature but they are no longer uh, connected or we can have this very abstract uh, cartogram so there that requires that your audience should be very familiar with those locations okay uh, of your start area OK, so that is cartogram. Uh, the, finally, so we can also have the flow map. So flow map can tell you the dynamic relationships among different regions. Uh, most likely, it's used to show the linear movement before, between places, like the, the flight uh, airlines, uh, etc., and also traffic flows. OK, so that is uh, the flow map. Uh, however, there's something that you need to consider about flow map. So for example, uh, because the flows are not ge geographic um, objects, so how do you want to project the data? Okay, and similarly, how do you want to scale the data? Okay, and what kind do you, how do you want to choose the symbols and also legend? Okay, so those are also the major considerations uh, when we design the flow maps.